Hello everyone, today we are going to do a quick guide to some of the main theatres in Edinburgh. Now you will notice I am in the car today, and that's because Edinburgh is not massive. It's not the biggest city in the world by any means. However, the theatres are dotted about the place a little bit, so it's just going to be easier for me to jump in the car and drive to each area where the theatres are. You can walk them very easily. I'm just being a little bit lazy today, to be completely honest. Um, some of them are very close to each other. So, my hat looks funny today, don't you think? Maybe it's just come holding the camera at a different angle than normal. Uh, but, uh, so we're going to start with the King's Theatre, Edinburgh. I don't know why I'm saying Edinburgh. It's obvious it's Edinburgh. I've just said we're doing a quick tour of all the theatres in Edinburgh. King's Theatre. Edinburgh. You know, truthfully, driving about and parking is going to be probably the most expensive video I've ever made <laughs> today. But, it, and the, half the reason was because it looks like it's going to rain. It's not a nice day. I'm going to dart about town. I don't want to be, you know, walking in that. That's fair, isn't it? Okay, King's Theatre. Theatre number one. King's Theatre, Edinburgh. Built in 1905. I'm not sure if it was built or opened in 1905. I definitely remember them doing a 100 year anniversary a little while ago, so it must have been opened in 1905. It is a beautiful little theatre. It's on three levels, stalls, um, a circle and an upper circle. It's not the biggest theatre in the world as in capacity, but it's a nice little size which allows a good size audience, but still at the same time being fairly intimate. It's now owned by Capital Theatres, which owns this theatre and uh, the Festival Theatre, which we're also going to nip to. Um, it does mostly, it gets mostly plays, but it does get musicals. It's what's called um, receiving theatre. So it, no, it doesn't put on its own productions unless they're local amdrams or charity events or things like that. Apart from the Christmas pantomime. Capital Theatre's put on a pantomime every year, uh, every year and it's huge in Edinburgh. You can't beat it at Christmas. It's the show that everyone wants to, uh, to go see. Um, if you don't know what a British pantomime is, you're going to have to look that up. Now, I've got that it seats 1,350. I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure that's correct. Stage door is down to the right there in case you wanted to know as well. I'm not sure that's correct. I thought it was slightly under a thousand, so maybe the numbers I've looked up are not up to date, but it's anywhere between 900 and 1,300. But it is a beautiful grand theatre, if you ever get the chance, there's lots of plays, it gets um, West End plays that are on tour all the time. It does get some musicals and of course, like I said, it does have some smaller local productions as well. But it is beautiful and grand, obviously I'm not going to go into the history of it too much because we've got a few theatres to see and ideally, if we're lucky, maybe one day they'll invite us in to have a look round properly. Wouldn't that be nice? One down. Moving on parked up and going to theatres 2, 3 and 4 actually. Uh, give you a rough idea where I am. It's Edinburgh Castle right there, or at least the back of it. And this car park here is Trainspotting 2 where Begbie and Renton had the fight and ran about and things. Right there. Grass Market just behind us over there, Princess Street, just there. So we're, kind of, we're not kind of the back of it, we're at the side of it. But actually we're not going there, we're not going there, we're not going there. We're going behind these buildings over here. It's kind of three theatres in this part here. We're going to start with the one behind me, the Traverse Theatre. This is actually a beautiful little theatre. It does have a bar and a lounge and things if you want to just sit and have, ca have uh, uh, lunch or something at any time. I think it opens quite early. It's got a sign up saying morning rolls, so it's obviously open quite early. It's more of a black box um, in the round kind of a theatre. There's a lot of cool little productions. I don't know how many seats it's got because I think that can vary on the production itself, but it's not a massive amount. It has some beautiful little productions in there though. It is well worth a visit. If you enjoy your theatre, more experimental work or more intimate work, this is definitely the place to come. It is a beautiful little spot. Very popular during the festival. Well, very popular all year round, but obviously festival kind of thing, that's the kind of thing that will pop up all around town but it's here all year. It's actually lovely, it's got a really nice bar downstairs. Um, it's got a nice 
bistro up there and things like that so if you are in the area and you want to check it out I definitely would I don't know much history about it uh, sorry um, but again I'm not going to go into the history of all these things because I'd kind of like at some point in the future hopefully they'll invite us in to show you around um, and talk about the history and talk about the space and things so I'm not going to go into that this is just a quick guide of different places and theatres you could go to if you're in town next up I've already got here that's the Travier Theatre right behind me here the Usher Hall not actually so much a theatre more of a concert hall actually the Usher Hall is a spectacular space um, for gigs and concerts of all sorts. I'm noticing a lot of these, I don't know if you can make that out there. That is Watch E.T. with a live full orchestra and I've noticed this one, Watch Goonies with a live orchestra and also my, my favourite, Watch Back to the Future with a live orchestra. I don't know if that's the trend right now but that sounds amazing, all three of them. Um, but yeah, so it's a beautiful big space, gets a lot of big names, um, both in uh, classical and contemporary kind of stuff. A lot of big names have played there. Opened in 1914, has about 2,200 seats inside it. You can see they've got a more modern extension on the side here for kind of the box office and things, uh, but the building itself is just beautiful. So there's another one, well worth a, list, uh, a check to see what is on in there. We are rattling through them today, guys. Now, Traverse, Usher Hall, I'm not going to cut away again. You're going to see how close we are to number four on the list and three right beside each other. That's your whole box office. Let's tilt, let's tilt, let's tilt. Lyceum Theatre. Okay, so I just did a little bit of research very quickly on my phone, just to at least give you the basic facts. The Traverse Theatre sits just over 300 seats around the corner. Not a massive theatre, but good for intimate. Um, like I said, Usher Hall, 2,200-ish as a concert venue. Lyceum Theatre, 615-ish, roughly, a little bit more. Um, so again, not a, a, a big seat in space, good for intimacy, um, good space, uh, beautiful space. Built in 1880s, um, you can see it's a very grand theatre. It's a very grand, beautiful theatre. It's one of these things that we don't build nowadays, is it? Theatres, we kind of count on the ones that we've got. We build arenas, we don't build theatres. The Lyceum's got its own production company, Lyceum Theatre Production Company. They put on a lot of their own shows, they write a lot of their own stuff, and they produce it, and they've got a brilliant, incredible big um, set design and props warehouse, which I was lucky enough to be in a couple of times but it is an incredible building which does some incredible productions, professional productions, I should say as well. If you ever get the chance, again, it's well worth just looking it up, seeing what's on. If you enjoy the theatre and you enjoy exploring these beautiful buildings, it's well worth a visit as well. And what's nice as well, as you look at it from this side, if you just pan to the right, there's Edinburgh Castle right there, so you can't go wrong with that either. Okay, so that's three theatres in really close proximity to each other there. Um, Edinburgh's got a lot of theatres, I'm not going to them all. Like there's the Churchill Theatre and there's the Leith Theatre, Leith Theatre just recently reopened. I'm just going to the sort of main ones in the centre of town and there's a lot of smaller ones as well. So this is just a quick guide to if you want to go to a, 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 one of the main theatres, but this is by no means an exhaustive list. We're only going to what, one, uh, two, three, four, five, we're only going to six of them today, just to give you a rough idea of places to look up if you want to go to the theatre. That's what I'm here for, yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. Next up, the Festival Theatre. And that's it there, this beautiful big glass building. So again, to give you a little bit of orientation, um, facing the Festival Theatre, if I go straight down the hill that way, that'll get me to Princess Street, right beside uh, the Balmoral Hotel. So you just keep walking up that street, you will get to here. Uh, uh, behind that building there, the thing, is the National Museum of Scotland. So you're fairly, you're fairly central. This is one of those theatres that I would love to do a full video on the history of it, and I would love it if they, you know, 
let me go in and have a wander about and show you and tell you a little bit more about it but very briefly and I'm not going to go into the full history because it's brilliant it's well worth a video on its own it was originally originally built in um, 1892 and it was opened as the Empire Theatre it burnt down that's got a brilliant story behind it which is well worth like I said a video on its own and reopened in 1911 as the Empire as well and it lots of concerts and ballets and things like that um, and then it kind of just became sort of a bingo hall for a long time it just got dilapidated and became a bingo hall and then it was knocked down and rebuilt as this building this was opened in uh, 1994 and became this grand theatre it's got about 1900 seats in it now it's open again all the time, behind that bus it's got a little cafe there so you can go in. It gets a lot of touring productions, big plays, musicals, um, big names visit there. It is owned by the same company that owns the King's Theatre. So if you're looking for something and you want the website, they will uh, they will both be on the same website if you're thinking about coming. But it's a beautiful big building, isn't it? It's just stunning. Like I said, that's a building I would love if they would let us go in and have a look around and show you one time and talk about the history. Last but by no means least, the Edinburgh Playhouse. And here it is. This is just a receiving theatre. It doesn't put any of its own productions on or anything like that. It just gets um, West End size musicals and um, live gigs. Generally, that's all it has. It doesn't put any of its own productions on. It is the largest seat theatre in Europe with 3,047 seats. It's got a massive, incredibly huge auditorium. You see, it's about to have Matilda on its first national tour. This is another one of those theatres that hopefully, if I'm lucky, I'll be allowed to go in and give you a proper tour. It's got quite a cool history as well. Opened in 1929, this year's its 90th birthday this year actually. It has got quite a cool history as well. This is one of those, if you're looking for a big scale show, this is probably, this and the festival theatre would be the ones you'd probably want to look at on the website, see what's going on. Just to give you a little bearings, we're actually at the top of Leith Walker, you can see there's a lot of work going on here right now because they're rebuilding all this street because the Edinburgh trams which finish just over there that's where they finish are going to be extended all the way down here and down Leith Walk we're at the top of Leith Walk right here I'm sorry it's not a great view this is one this is one that as a child I was really lucky my mum and dad used to take me to things that as a child I didn't appreciate but enjoyed and now I look back and go wow that was lucky I watched the Everly Brothers in there I watched Chuck Berry in there I watched uh, John Denver some of the biggest names in the world, and I do mean literally some of the biggest names in the world have played that stage. Elton John's played there, Queen's played there, you know in the Freddie Mercury movie um, where they're doing Bohemian Raps and it's getting famous and they go Edinburgh. That was there. Some of the names that have played there are incredible. It really is. At, at one point it was the most, one of the most famous gig houses in the world. Anyone who was anyone was playing the Edinburgh Playhouse. So there we have it guys, I think that will probably do it for this week. This has just been a quick guide to the six main, main theatres in Edinburgh. By no means all of them. So if you're, uh, sorry there's fans around about me here, big industrial fans from the buildings. Uh, if you are thinking about coming to Edinburgh and you're looking for something to do at night time, indoors, instead of going, you know, to a pub or something like that, those are the theatres I would check out theatres or concert halls I would check out see what's on, it's well worth a visit I'll leave a link to every one of their websites in the description below so you can go on and see what's going on if you've enjoyed the video, you know the rules guys give it a like uh, leave a comment um, if we're lucky these venues will let me go in and do a history of them, that would be amazing and I could nip in and like the video leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already that would be amazing, come join Clan Brunford um, but yeah, until next time, bye humans.